Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. Now, this is going to be a one-take video. I can't be asked on it and edit. I don't know. Well, I can be asked, but I just don't have the time to sit and edit every single question and such. So, we're just going to kind of fly through this. But welcome back to a series which has been dormant for a very long time. Um, I've been uh, off the off the mark with this one. And uh, I enjoyed doing it when it was around. It, it just wasn't doing as successful as some other videos and such. But do you know what? I still enjoyed doing it. And I gave the chance to interact with some fans. Um, I done a kind of spin-off version of it as well and called it the fucking Ryan one one eight phone in or something like that and that went down well. I was thinking about just rebranding it to that. Eventually, I'd like to do like a proper phone in series, but that could end in disaster as we could have um, like ten year olds phone up and such, which would be quite weird. And also, we could just have some absolute roasters phone up. You, you know what the super scoreboard's like. Um, but um, this is uh, the CFC Q and A. Welcome back. I don't know what episode it is. This is a special edition episode. You know, there's only a couple of weeks left in the season. We're coming up for the old fun this weekend. We'll do the match preview for that tomorrow. Uh, we've got the last game of the season, the week after that, Trophy Day. And then we've got the Scottish Cup Finals. So an eventful three weeks left, I suppose. But right now, we're going to talk about some subjects that you guys uh, wanted me to talk about on Twitter. If you want to get involved in this series, if I bring it back regularly, then the Twitter will be on screen uh, at some point. It's at CFCQA118. You can find it through my Twitter as well, probably. Um, and actually just reply to the thread. And we get some questions going. But as I said, it's going to be one take. I can't be bothered with editing that. So we're, we're just going to get right into it. We've got some questions here some will probably be the same some of the stuff that i've already spoke about on the channel so i'll try and keep it as um as fresh and such as possible and and, and try and keep opinions new and different but um we'll see new and different sounds weird but anyway first question came from fredo forrester who said thoughts on lennon's team selections don't understand how all three of the new signings are not getting a look and i agree with fredo on this occasion feels weird calling someone fredo um i i, I really don't understand neil lennon's um decision not to include the likes of Oliver Buck, Jeremy Tolian, and, uh, I sound his name weird there, and uh, Timo Weir. I found it really weird, in fact, that, that Weir basically had no look in at all until the weekend, and he played well, and it shows that we should be looking to play him a lot more. Uh, I think he's a player with bags of talent, he should be in the team as much as possible, he can change things, he's got a completely different dimension to his game than what other players do in the squad, he offers something unique and different, and he should be in the team all the time. Buck, I didn't think was playing badly at all, I think there was a lot of his game that didn't look great, um, maybe his first touch and his finishing could be better, but... It brought a breath of fresh air when he came in, and that period between those guys coming in and Brendan Rodgers leaving the club, they all played quite well when they were given their opportunities. Buck was scoring goals, and at the end of the day, that's what matters. doesn't matter how you score your goals. If you score them, they're, they're there. And um, the Buck and, and Weir really just got erased from the team, and I feel bad because I feel Buck was building a lot of momentum. He's building a lot for the club. He voiced how he wanted to be at the club permanently uh, or come back next season. And now the chances of that happening are probably very slim. It depends who comes in. But if we bring in a completely new manager, they've not had the chance to see Buck, and he's not offered too much that would suggest we should get him again. Weir, I believe, could come back if PSG are willing because maybe they won't be too impressed with the amount of time he was given, the amount of chances he was given, so that's a weird one. And Toljan's probably just gone as well. He's not had a lot to do and such. So, uh, yeah, I, I'm, I'm very confused as to why Neil Lennon did drop those three and, and didn't give them the chance. I think um, maybe he just wanted to go with players that he's more familiar with uh, and, and they've been at the team longer. Uh, and that looks like it, but um, I'm disappointed those three weren't given more opportunities, but hopefully we can see a bit more of them in the next three games, and um, maybe we'll see a chance of them coming back. The only one I see realistically coming back is Weir, uh, to be honest. J-Boy, uh, 07534, so it sounds like a phone number, uh, it says, do you think if we keep Neil Lennon's manager, 10 in a row will be a possibility? 10 in a row is always going to be a possibility, no matter who's in charge. We're at 8, we're, we're nearly there, there's two more titles to go, it's what we've been shouting about for the last eight years. We need to get there. Um, we need to get there. It's what I want more than anything else. Fuck the treble, treble. Fuck the quadruple treble. As much as I, I'm not saying that in a way like you're just fucking forget them. I want that as well. That'd be lovely. But um, if sacrificing those things meant win ten in a row, I'd happily do it. I would happily do it. If there was an ultimatum, if a, a genie came to me and he said, "You can have one or the other, mate. You can have a treble, treble." Oh, sorry about the hair, by the way. And uh, or, or you can have 10 in a row. <laughs> Fuck the treble, treble. That's what I'd be saying. So, um, really, I think it's a possibility, but it's going to be dodgy under Neil Lennon. I've already voiced my concerns for that. Um, I do have faith that he can do it, he can deliver it, but not as much faith as maybe if we got a Jose Mourinho. I'm joking. If we got someone else in, I just feel like we need someone with a bit more of a uh, tactical ideology around them. Uh, and just, just someone else, just not Neil Lennon. I do think Neil Lennon can do it. He's Celtic through and through. He will make sure he gets it. 
but the performances have suggested maybe we don't work hard enough under Lennon. And that's why I'd like to see somebody else. So, under Neil Lennon, it's a possibility, but probably not as great a possibility as what it was under Rodgers or a better manager. Um, Adam Mitchell has sent in a question, should the number five be retired for Billy McNeil? Um, I don't think the shirt should be retired. I'm, I'm not all for the, the shirt retirements, and that's not with disrespect to Billy McNeil. He's, he's a man who has all my respect in the world. He's the greatest sell in the, the history of our club. He's the greatest man to ever be associated with Celtic Football Club. And um, I've already spoke about all that. I just don't think shirt retirements are, are completely... Ne- I don't know. I, I'm not bothered. It would, it would be great respect. It doesn't bother me. If they retire it, retire it. It's a, a lovely mark of respect and such. But um, it's a legacy. Number five, you know, more players get to wear it and get the understanding behind the man. Uh, I mean, look at Joseph Semenovic, you know, how much he meant to him scoring that goal a couple of weeks ago. I'm not too too bothered about it all. I think it's retired, it's retired. Um, I'm not a big on the matter. Um, I think, you know, the man, the man has got everything... Um, from a Celtic family, uh, the respect that we've gave him is is you know greater than anything else. Uh, greater than a shirt retirement. So I'm not too bothered, but you know if it is retired, it gets retired. Uh, Liam Riley has asked, if, uh, would I sign Patrick Roberts? Of course, I would. I'd bring back Patrick Roberts in a heartbeat to Celtic. He was a player with marvelous ability, great technique. Um, he was someone who, once again, as I said, the likes of Timmy Weir, Tim, Tim Weir does. He offers this breath of fresh air, something different. And this was a player who delivered on all stages for me. He delivered domestically. He d- delivered on European games as well. He was just... he was that. Sometimes he looked like he was a level above. And that's what we need. We need to bring in players who look and feel a, a, a level above. Uh, and I think Patrick Roberts is one of those players. So, do you know what? Patrick Roberts, if the opportunity was there to sign him, he's had a honker at Girona um, and... and as expected, I would say. I don't think Brits belong abroad. Um, and when it comes to football in terms, there's very few who can do it. You know, you look at Jaden Sancho, um, who's done it fantastically at Dortmund, but in the grand scheme of things, you know, when you see these big moves to Spain, the likes of Beckham and Woodgate and such, they weren't as good as what they were when they were playing here. Um, but I'd bring him back in a heartbeat for the right price. I'd, I wouldn't go over the top. Um, but he's a player who I'd love to have back at Celtic. And I'd take him back in a heartbeat, Patrick Roberts. Um... Anyway, let's see. Let's have a look through the next questions. Uh, in your opinion, should say could this is the big question? This is going to be the title of the episode. This is sent in by Connor, who says, "In your opinion, do you think Celtic could replicate what Ajax have done in Europe this season? It would be marvelous. It would be wonderful. It would be literally the making of me as a man. I would feel, uh, I feel like my life would be complete if Celtic could get anywhere near the Champions League semi-finals. Ultimately, will that ever happen? No. Could they replicate what Ajax have done? No. It takes a lot. It's going to take miracles. Now, I understand where Celtic fans may come from and go, well, Ajax have done it and, and they've not spent any more, much more than we have and uh, and they're doing it with youngsters and such, but their youngsters are a different. Right now, there's a reason how they've had to wait this long for to get back to that level in the Champions League, the semi-finals. There's a reason it's been the first time since 1990 on. Um, uh, or whatever you know it's, it's these these group of youngsters are absolutely unbelievable uh frankie de jong matthias delict van de beek onana is that the keeper is that no is it i think it is you know these players they're marvel they're something else these are barcelona-esque players they're, the players who are going to end up de jong's already signed alex about to sign these are players who are brought up bred you know conditioned to be the best and the f- freaks, that's the best way to put it. Matthias Delict is 19 years old. I think I'm fucking older than him. <laughs> and uh, he's just unbelievable. It's Celtic until they can somehow produce that magnificent freak of nature type of player are never going to get to that stage in Europe. It's just the honest truth. Now, if we do manage to breed that sort of player, and Holland is just that. Holland are good at producing young players. Holland are just a different nation. And there's a reason why the Netherlands are, have been one of the greatest nations in, in international football history. And Scotland are where we are. Because they breed players, and, and footballers are better conditioned, and they grow up in better conditions such over there. It's, it's, it comes down to grassroots, and it, it just all starts... It's, it's where it begins, where it all changes for these two countries. So, for us to produce players like that would take... A miracle, an absolute miracle, and I wish we could. 
But ultimately, it's just never going to happen. Now, if we were to somehow appoint a manager like Jose Mourinho, could we reach the semi-finals of the Champions League? I still don't believe so. Unless we spend big, we produce highly, uh, and bring in players who are just much bigger than Scottish football. Until that day, until we are given the resources that these leagues are given and that England are given, we're never going to be at that stage, and that's just the reality of it all. Uh, and it's a shame. It's, it really is a shame. But to, for us to produce something like Ajax have done this year would take a genuine miracle. We'd have to all pray for it, and uh, it would be, it would just be unbelievable. It would be a, it would be a one season thing. It could happen. There's always that chance. Let's not win the league. You know, there's that chance that something will happen. You know, all it takes is for the stars to to line in our direction. But realistically, it's not going to happen. So, aye. Um, in your opinion, do you think Celtic could replicate it? No. Not until those stars align, as I said. Uh, that's it, though, for the CSC q and I've answered a good few questions there. I believe I've done quite decent uh, enough. So if you've enjoyed, make sure to hit like and subscribe. Let me know your opinions to all the questions. I can't drive a load there. I've rambled a lot. I've spoke very fast. I wanted to get through as much as possible. Uh, if you enjoyed, like and subscribe. And I'll see you all next time.